Hi, this is Patty Sampson at ExposedAgent.com. How are you? Uh, I am, uh, I've been asked by one of my agent clients to um, share how to clone a campaign within LineDesk. Uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and record it and uh, post it out there for anybody who needs it. So you've got campaigns. Well, first of all, why would you clone a campaign? Um, I suggest if you've got some great campaigns that you like for buyers or sellers and you know it's kind of standard generic that you might want to take that campaign and clone it and make it a little bit more um, uh, fine-tuned for a lead that a lead type so for instance you're gonna do an ad on Facebook and you're gonna offer up and um, maybe some information about one of your listings or you're gonna do an open house and you know you're, you're expecting to get a lot of leads that's that's when I would suggest you do a clone is that you're expecting expecting to get some leads so um, uh, and if you do then you want to make that that campaign way more specific for your particular lead source that you're gonna get and so I would suggest that you um, clone a campaign that you like that you've got maybe that's already you know edited and perfect for you and just do a little bit of more edits to it if you choose to so let's just take for instance I'm just gonna go ahead and clone one that I already have already so I have an online um, buyer lead campaign so I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, the uh, the actions from this thing and clone the entire thing so this is the campaign I would do so let's just say I've got a new you know campaign running on Facebook so I'm going to go ahead and click on the actions. First of all, I'm going to be in the marketing tab. I'm going to the autopilot campaign tab. You can clone campaigns, but you can't clone the templates themselves uh, until you clone the campaign. So let's show you how this works. Uh, so we're going to go to the uh, online lead one that I have, and I want to clone it. So when I hit clone, I'm going to get two of them. You're going to, and they're going to be one right under, under the other, and you're going to see the difference. One's going to be um, new. Well, one will, one will say this one is the original one, and here's the new one. So then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to edit the name of that. that. So it's specific to me or whatever it is I'm doing. And I'm a fan of putting a star here because then all of the ones that I, use, that I want will be at the top. Everything will pop to the top. So I'm going to go. Uh, I'm just going to call this buyer. Uh, buyer. Uh, let's call it online lead for online lead for single level home ad. Single level home <laughs> ad. <laughs> it's still early in Arizona. I'm a little slow. Uh, okay, update. Now when I do that, it pops up to the top, right? So I know this is the campaign I'm going to be working on. Now if I click on the tasks in here, all the tasks for that campaign are going to be identical to the ones that were down in this campaign, okay? So now what do I have to do? I'm going to go over to the template side of this too, and I'm going to go and locate. What happened was when I cloned it, I got exact uh, duplicate of the template. So here in the template tab, I'm on the template tab. So they, they'd clone the entire folder where all the templates were. So I have exact duplicates down in here. So what, in order to keep myself from getting confused when I want to come in and edit this campaign later, I'm going to um, take this folder, which is the second one that got, just got created, and I'm going to edit the name of this folder now, right? And I'm going to call this uh, on, uh, what did I call it over there? I put buyer, I'm going to go online, buyer uh, single level single level campaign single level homes whatever I mean whatever your whatever your campaign or your ads gonna be that's what I would call this home now I'm gonna call this templates this time because I don't want to confuse myself from screen to screen and now when I do that and of course I put a star there and then it bought it, it came up here alphabetically so now it's right here okay so here are the exact templates for that particular property or ad that I'm going to do, right? So I basically have duplicates, duplicate again. So just to clarify, this is how you do it, all right? So now I might choose to put a recurring email in there, and I have all these recurring emails that I, that I set up to put out. So if I'm going to offer up single-level home ad, then I need to be ready. So I would go to my website and run a search for single-level homes, right? So I just go over to my site. This is like the best tip you could do because you want to, you, if you're going to offer it, you might as well get the listings ready to go. So I can come over here and run a search for single level homes. For lack of time, I'm not I'm going to do it, but I'm just going to pull a search up of anything. So, I, uh, so you're going to run a search and you can just simply do it as a consumer on the consumer side, 
run a search for single level homes and then grab the URL of that single level home search or whatever your ad is going to be offering, right? And then I'm going to create a new email template in here that will be um, the single level home search, right? So I might quickly go in here and if you've already got a template for it, then just pull that in. But I'm just going to go ahead and say here are, here are, this is not the way I would type up this letter, but I'm just for lack of time or for, for the uh, interest of time, I'm going to do it like this. Uh, here are your single level homes you requested. Okay, be, be better than this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this particular kind of letter. And I'm going to do all single level homes for sale in Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to um, then put a hyperlink in back to my URL of my website. I like to target it out to a new window and I'm going to click OK on that. And so that letter now I'm going to, first I got to put a subject line in here and save it. Okay, so let's go ahead and save it. I like to put my name in there. Um, single, uh, single level. Oh gosh, it's still early here, folks. Single level homes for sale in Scottsdale and closed or something like that, right? Um, and I'm just going to call this buyer single level uh, recurring in Scottsdale. This is for me for my reference. And then I'm going to find a folder to put it in. I've got a junk folder where I can save stuff while I'm teaching stuff. So I'm going to dump it in there or I could stick it. Ideally, really, I should have taken this, and let me just show you, really, I should have taken this and put it in uh, the folder where the single level homes that it are. So that way everything's there, right? So I'm gonna go into that template. So never mind what I did a second ago. So I opened it back up, I went down to the folder and stuck it into there. So everything related to that campaign is in that folder, all right? Now the only other thing I have to do, because I just created that, is to go back over to the campaign. Well, here's the, here's the campaign. I need to add that in because it's even though I wrote it, it's not added into the tasks yet. So I'm gonna go over here and add it to the tasks of this campaign. So I'm just gonna add a task. Let's, just go, man, let's go back. I'm in the campaign itself. I click on the task, I add a new task, and I'm going to um, set up the email to go out. And I want this to go every three days because it's a buyer, right? So I'm gonna go down to the folder in here and find where it's at. And it's the very last thing I did, so it's right there. And I'm gonna set this up to go out every three days. One, two, three. Because it's a buyer and I don't know anything about them, so I'm not gonna assume anything. I'm gonna start sending it out the day that the campaign goes on. So I usually go between 10 and 11. I'm going to go 245 times. We'll take it three every three days. We'll be almost two years because it's almost the 20th today of November 2017. So two years out, they'll, they'll opt out. So now it's been added in here into the campaign, right? So it's going to start going out with that, right? Now, the next question is, if you know you're going to be getting ads done on Facebook, then you need to do that Zapier connection currently because the, the connection between your Facebook ad and um, your uh, and your Lion Desk when somebody signs up is not set up yet, right? So we need to get that set up. So you got to do that whole Zapier thing. Oops, husband's calling. Um, hold on, I'm going to put you on hold for a sec. Okay, sorry about that. I had to talk to the hubby. Um, so uh, you, you want to make sure that you get this set up so the connection comes into Lion Desk uh, as far as if you're doing a Facebook ad or whatever kind of ad you're going to do. So you want to um, get that whole Zapier thing set up and make sure that you have a source set up specific for your ad. So we're going to actually do that. So I'll go into the settings and I need to add a source for that ad. And don't just say Facebook. I would go Facebook single level, Facebook single level. Um, Scottsdale ad or something like that you know you could do that so you know um, add the source because when you're setting it up from Zapier which is a whole other training in itself that you need to make sure that Zapier has this so that when it comes in it knows exactly which campaign to turn on all right so um, I've got the ad added in or the ad one added in as a source so at the lead distribution settings um, for right now we're using Zapier to get our Facebook ads in here if that's what you're doing or however you're getting your lead and then I'm going to add a new lead routing. Um, if you want it to go on automatically, this is what you're going to have to do. So you get this set up in here. Now I'm going to um, go up to the ad, the single Facebook single level Scottsdale ad is the source. Because it's only through LionDesk uh, source that it knows what campaign to turn on, right? So now I'm telling it to start that new campaign right here, right? 
And if you have a team or however you're going to roll it out, you know, roll it out if you're going to go team or not. Again, another training. But right now, if you're just you and you're getting your leads, just put on an individual. Save the lead routing. So now you can see it's right here, right? So now when the lead comes in and the source is saying this, it should know exactly which campaign to turn on. And you've got your campaign all ready to rock and roll and everything should run smoothly. Now, of course, if you need to turn it on manually, you know, you can turn it on manually. I'll, I guess I can go in here and, and uh, show you how to manually turn it on for somebody. Um, let me just put my name in here real quick. Uh, see what I got. I got all kinds of testing going on in here. Okay, so if you're in here, you want to turn it on manually in case you haven't done this yet. You go into the lead itself and you go to marketing and, oops, sorry, not, sorry, sorry, that's how you shut it off. You turn it on, you can do it simply right here and um, go down to the single level ad campaign and turn it on. And click on it and it goes on, right? So I'll go ahead and click on it because then I'll have to shut it off. But, so I'll click on it, and so if I, every time I get a new lead, if I'm going to do it manually, then I need to come in and do that if you're just doing all this manually. Now, um, down here, you can see it's been turned on. And if I choose later, I want to turn something off. Let's say they tell you, you know, I don't want single level in Scottsdale. I want single level in Tempe. Then I would shut this one off, and I, I could easily just shut that off and leave the rest of the campaign on and come up here to email and um, set up a whole nother one and I can do it strictly out of here. So if I already had the, just to, let's just say this is it, you already had it written, you'd have to come in and write it or you can use this one and change up the link because this is, it's already written, it's in a template already. It's right here, right? It's the last thing I did, so it's right here or I can go to the folder and look for it. But it was right here because it was the last thing I did. I just clicked on it and I could easily just edit this simply by editing the name of this um, thing, and I could say Tempe, right? And uh, if I wrote Temp, if I just did this, Tempe, and then I go back over and run a different search, you know, grab something else, your Tempe search for single, single level homes, make sure you run that search correctly, and then come back in the Lion Desk, and, and now all you gotta do is click on this and click on the URL link and replace the link, you know, and then target it out. I always do target to new window. Oh, it was already done, so I didn't have to do that. Okay, cancel. Never mind. So anyway, okay, yes, I, uh, yes, that's fine. Whatever. Hold on. I'm just gonna make me do something here. I don't know what. Uh, new window. Link info. New window. Okay, just hit okay. Okay. So it just changed it, but now I've got to schedule it to go out if I'm gonna change this. So I'm gonna ch edit this letter too and say temp B because they're telling me they want to be in a different city or whatever the search change is. Now I'm going to um, set up the recurring to go just right in here for this individual. Just this person is going to get it this way. So I want it to start on today's date. I want it to go out at, you know, what between 10 and 11 is my thing. I'm going to go every three days. It's going to end after 245 times, not 1,245 times. Well, I suppose you could. <laughs> this is a little glitch this system has. So sometimes when you go to type the number and it doesn't take it. And then you're going to schedule the email. Oops, I got to put it in a folder. So now I'm going to take it and stick it in. Uh, my, this will go in a different folder. I would probably have a different folder called recurring emails because this is not part of that other campaign. So I would just dump it into... Uh, miscellaneous recurring email folder or something and I can schedule the email now so now what happens though is just so you know is that this is not built into the campaign any longer it's it's running separately so because I clicked on it manually up there it's not in this campaign so if you choose to shut this whole thing off later you can this is still running but the other one is running somewhere else so if you're wondering where it's at you will find it over in the communications tab and um, you'll get that, get to that over here, and you click on the view scheduled emails. I only have one in here right now, but if I had, I could easily search my per. If you had a whole lot going out, you'd have to run a search for it, right? I have P testing, so you could run a search right here to find it. But there could be a whole pile of them in here. Most likely there is. Okay, so that's how that works. And so if you want to shut this off later, then you just dump it in the trash right here. But you can review, you can preview it, see what it says, and goes goes out here. You can't edit it here. If you want to edit it, you got to go back into the tab where the marketing tab is. If you want to edit it later, um, this is how you edit it. At this point, you can edit it. See, I had to take it out. I could not edit it within the campaign when it was built in the campaign that way because it's part of a global campaign. This now is in a folder 
that I dumped in and it's over here for this individual, right? So it's right here. So I can edit this. By the way, I can use this in other people's accounts too if I wanted to. Just be careful if you start using these. You, you, I could make this specific for that individual if I wanted to, you know, and never use it again. But I could reuse it because it is in a template form because I've got the first name fields pulling in. So um, that, that part's just a little tricky because we've had a lot of people say, oh, I want to take out letters. I want to add in other ones. Well, that's how you do it if you want to do it individually per person you have to write it because remember the campaigns are global and they're meant to be used for people anybody anybody that comes in so if you want to make it more specific you cannot edit the letter within the campaign just for that person you ha without and without screwing up the entire campaign right so you've got if you want to do it just for that person then you need to go in and basically pull the letter out and rewrite it or, or edit it like I just showed you hope that makes sense so if you like this tip, please go over to um, our, my, my team, my page over at Exposed Agent and click on this and you'll have more, more tips like this if it's something you're interested in. And if you want training and drip campaigns, you just are my site, uh, two weeks away, I think we're gonna be up and running finally. There's so much to put on here. Um, but anyway, if you want drip campaigns uh, pre-built or anything like that, uh, training one-on-one -on -one or our members, group uh, and that member page is getting ready to roll out as well. We're so excited. So um, you can learn about all that right here at this page right now. And then um, when we get everything up and running, there'll be way more stuff here. But for now, that's where we're at. Anyway, I really appreciate you stopping by and uh, good luck. Have a great day. And, uh, you know, clone those, clone, those, uh, clone those campaigns. Save yourself some time. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.